Hear more about modern agriculture in California, and a few questions I'd like you to ask yourself during this is, how does California rank among other states in the United States in terms of its agricultural productivity or the amount of economic output for agriculture? And is the agriculture in California more or less diverse than in other states? And then lastly, how can we produce so much food in California with relatively few with a relative small percentage of our population actually working in the agricultural sector. So the first one is easy. California is the leading agricultural state. If we look at the top five agricultural states, um, California really dwarfs the others. Like it is 13.4% uh, of the agriculture in the United States and nearly double that of the next highest state of Iowa with Texas, Nebraska, and others, you know, following behind. But the difference between number one and number two is quite dramatic. And a lot of that has to do with the, the types of things that we grow as well. Let me just show this, these maps as an illustration. This is showing where cropland is in the United States in red. And most of the cropland in California is in the Central Valley, although there is more dispersed around. And these are the other Midwestern agricultural states, such as Iowa. Now, if we change our perspective a little bit, if we divide it into two categories, the yellow is what we call row crops or field crops, things like corn, beans, and wheat. And the purple now are orchards and vineyards. And if you look over here at California, you can see that there is a real mixture of both field crops or row crops and orchards and vineyards. Let's zoom in a little closer to see that. You see uh, mostly <coughs> field crops in the Midwest and a real mix of both orchards and vineyards and other field crops in California. And if we break that up still into a few different categories, citrus, oranges and lemons, field pasture crops like beans and cotton, uh, grains, which are wheat primarily, uh, other orchards, rice truck crops, which are fresh vegetables, and vineyards. In other words, if we kind of break it into more categories, you can see that California is a real mixture. You have rice in the Sacramento Valley, you have fresh vegetables in the San Joaquin and other places, a number of nut crops, citrus, and a whole mixture of things. If we get in a little closer, you can see the, the point being that California has a very wide variety of types of agricultural products that are grown here, from rice in the Sacramento Valley to onions and melons in Western Fresno County, to orchards of all types and vineyards and quite a bit of different things. So ag agriculture in California, we can describe it as highly productive and diverse. It's a leading state in more than 75 types of crop or livestock commodities. And for a lot of crop categories, such as almonds, California is really the, the only practical producer of things such as almonds, olives, pomegranates, and raisins. And, and as we've described, California's agriculture is what can be des described as agribusiness or a intensive type of commercial agriculture that is a business. Um, and it's an integrated part of our economy. It includes other interrelated business, farm machinery, chemicals, processing. Um, it's an integrated part of the California's economy. It doesn't stand alone. Um, it benefits from economies of scale. So larger farms save money because you have less equipment per, per farm, less people and more equipment. And that makes the higher profit margins. And you also get on what we call a multiplier effect that there's a lot of other economic activity that's generated by agriculture. So if you think of the economy of Fresno, that Fresno, a large, what, one, what, one reason that Fresno thrives is because it's integrated with the surrounding farm economy. And California also benefits from biotechnology or what we call the green revolution, which is about applying new technologies to grow crops. We'll include some films that illustrate some of this, but you know, there's a whole integration of technologies that's used to grow crops in modern agribusiness 
from GPS to remote sensing, GIS, um, genetic modification of plant material. And so farming has gone from, while it's still considered a primary industry, it is very high tech. Now there is some downside to this as well. So with biotechnology and the green revolution, we're not all varieties of crops are as profitable as others. So about a hundred years ago, you could, you know, there were um, hundreds of types of tomatoes grown or hundreds of types of cabbage and so on. Um, but now this, take tomatoes for example, where there was about 400 varieties grown a hundred years ago, we're down to about 79. And so, because these 79 are the most profitable types of tomatoes. And so one downside is that we're reducing the diversity of the crops we grow with the more we have these large scale commercial farming operations. So while it does generate money, it does have some downsides as well. Uh, particularly when we think about things like climate change, that some of these varieties that we're not growing anymore could be better adapted to a changing environment in the future. 